Okay, this broadcast is primarily aimed at Bible believing pre millennial Christians. Uh, if you are a Catholic, if you are an Anglican, or if you are of the Reformed persuasion within Calvinism, then this video will have no interest to you. Uh, why? Well, we believe, as Bible believing pre millennial Christians, that when the Lord Jesus Christ returns to planet Earth, at the end of the Great Tribulation with his saints with him he will go to Jerusalem uh, and Jerusalem will be where he will reign physically and literally for 1000 years uh, those groups Calvinists, Catholics, Anglicans and I'm afraid to say even uh, Muslims and uh, large sections of the Jewish community believe that Christ is not coming back to reign from Jerusalem uh, we have a uh, yet again another conflict in the Middle East. Uh, Hezbollah stroke Hamas are attacking Israel once again, and uh, we see the world uniting against Israel of all countries. Israel once again is being singled out as the aggressor. Um, the left wing media are leading the way as usual and throwing stones at the only democratic country in the Middle East. Uh, the Pope went to a mosque in Syria uh, some years ago, this is John Paul II I'm referring to, and he kissed the Quran. Uh, the Quran says that Jesus Christ did not die on the cross and he was not the Son of God. Uh, to make such a statement is Luciferian and Antichrist. Uh, also, did you know on the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem, which is the third most holiest site in the Islamic world, uh, there was a plaque on the wall of the rock and it says cursed be he who proclaims that Jesus is the son of God and the Pope had uh, no problems about that and he kissed the Quran uh, Pope Benedict the 16th uh, has also been very chummy with the Islamic world and uh, cozying up to them and uh, this is something which I would think any sane educated Roman Catholic would be horrified uh, to come across there is a group in America called uh, True Catholics. They follow Pope Pius XIII and they believe that he is the true Pope. They consider every Pope since the death of uh, Pacelli, who was Pope Pius XII, to be anti-Pope. And uh, you can Google that for more information. But uh, we have the left-wing press, the left-wing media, and their socialist friends lining up to give uh, reports to the press about uh, how dreadful Israel is. I saw a guy on the news this morning, a well-known Jewish comedian of all people, saying that we need to boycott Israel uh, like we did with South Africa during the 70s and 80s during the apartheid era. Uh, clearly he is a traitor and no doubt the Jewish community would have lots to say about him in the coming days and months ahead. What does uh, interest me is this uh, group of left-wing stroke agnostic men and women who are in the papers whether it is uh, Annie Lennox from uh, Eurythmics or George Galloway and I'll come to him in a moment or Tony Benn or even uh, Ken Livingston what these left-wing agnostics won't do is head to the nearest Saudi Arabian embassy and protest about the way that they treat their women like for example circumcising uh, Islamic women against their will most of the time refusing to allow women to drive in Saudi Arabia uh, nothing is said about this neither will these same people head out to the embassies of North Korea uh, or China for example where in North Korea for example the average uh, person sits in darkness for 14 hours a day and has to eat grass because of such terrible poverty uh, in Castro's Cuba people are still treated like third-class citizens if they refuse to go along with the uh, left-wing propaganda machine uh, nothing is ever said about this uh, Bianca Jagger one of uh, Jagger's wives uh, doesn't have anything to say about these barbaric uh, dictatorial countries and yet time and time again they will throw stones at Israel it is a very one-sided biased uh, attempt to discredit the only democracy in the Middle East.
Uh, we don't support everything Israel says or does. Uh, she can be heavy handed at times. Uh, for example, when she sends helicopter gunships out into the streets to fire uh, rockets or uh, automatic weapons on the civilians on the streets, that can be somehow uh, that can be considered uh, heavy handed. Whereas during the IRA years, uh, the British government never sent the army into South Armagh or parts of uh, Republican strongholds to obliterate the IRA. They didn't do it because they knew there'd be heavy casualties and uh, Britain wanted to fight a more conventional war. Uh, the same was true of the Russians in Afghanistan. They didn't uh, uh, destroy the Mujahideen. They could have done, but they didn't. And neither did America flatten the Viet Cong during the Vietnam War. They could have dropped chemical or even nuclear weapons, but they didn't uh, because they are uh, bound to fight conventional wars whereas the enemy, the terrorists that you are fighting most of the time are not bound to fight any conventional war. Uh, however, Israel is the most hated nation in the world, uh, there's no doubt about it, along with uh, the Palestinians. The Arab nations for the most part have no interest in the Palestinian people. Uh, in 1970, 20,000 Palestinians were massacred in uh, Jordan by King Hussein and uh, it's gone down as uh, it's gone down as being dubbed uh, Black September, but nothing much was said in the Western press. However, if uh, a couple of Palestinians get killed by Israeli soldiers, it's uh, main news around the world. This is very one-sided and it is something completely abhorrent to anybody who just wants to get to the truth of the matter. Uh, for most people watching the war, the conflict in the Middle East, they have no understanding of what is going on. For those of us that are Bible believers, we know it is a religious war. Uh, Islam's sole purpose is to destroy Judaism. Uh, Islam hates the Jews, the Christians, and the rest of the liberal uh, Islamic world. Uh, if you're not a Muslim, you are a Kafir. Uh, Martin Luther was quick to call Muhammad the firstborn of Satan. Uh, he was quite critical of Muhammad. Muhammad did deny Jesus Christ in just about every possible way imaginable and uh, when you see liberal apostate Christian groups sucking up uh, to these mullahs it is a disgrace and they will have to give an account when they arrive at the great white throne uh, we are a Bible believing pre-millennial ministry we believe that the land of Israel is for the Jews and has always been for the Jews and woe be to anybody that comes against Israel uh, to divide the land up anymore. Uh, these politicians for the most part in Israel uh, are not saved and uh, what will be of a shock to a lot of our uh, messianic followers is the fact that uh, Yasser Arafat is now in hell along with Saddam Hussein. They both died trusting in Allah uh, and I believe they're in hell with uh, Begin and uh, Mr. Rabin who was assassinated uh, and all the other Jewish leaders since the year of 1948 when they went back into the land uh, let's not be agnostic let's call a spade a spade you know what the bible says he that hath the son hath life and he that hath not the son of god hath not life you're either in christ or you're not and the sad tragedy here is that the jews and the muslims are not saved uh, they may come from abraham but that does not save them they're still as lost as uh, alistair crowley or joe stalin and uh, we need your prayers we need you to pray for Israel you're told to do this in the Bible and uh, you'll be blessed for doing this and you need to pray for the Muslims too uh, it doesn't help you to hurt or to hate anybody uh, and if you do hate or hurt anybody then clearly you are against God uh, we are told to live peacefully with our neighbors uh, we don't fight wars we pray for those who persecute us and uh, we want you to know that Israel is very special in the eyes of God and uh, Jews have been persecuted for far too long now by the Catholic Church by Islam and every other Nazi group that is out there uh, when Israel does air then you should show it you should explain it you should uh, highlight it we've done this before uh, the Jews can be heavy-handed uh, they're not perfect but they are run by unsaved men and women uh, we are non-partisan, we don't support any of the political parties per se in Israel, but we do support their right to be in the land, to live safely, 
without the fear of rockets being fired from Hamas um, it's backed up by their friends uh, Hezbollah and maybe even uh, groups left within the Mujahideen all financed of course and supported by Iran and Syria so keep Israel in your prayers make sure you're not against her but for her uh, we don't want you to experience the wrath of God when you die and go before the judgment seat of Christ if you are saved and if you're not saved to go before the great white throne to be cast into hell it's not something that we want to see and uh, just take a look at Matthew 25 read it a few times through to see how Jesus rewards those who bless Israel and how he destroys those that uh, stood against Israel okay well here we are 24 hours on uh, Israel has mobilized 10,000 soldiers uh, we are told that they will be uh, going into Gaza in limited numbers uh, no doubt special forces have been going in prior over the last 48 to 72 hours uh, I'm always surprised uh, and impressed that the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force uh, drops flyers over targets before bombing them uh, just to let the locals know that uh, their area has been targeted as far as I know no army in the world does this uh, the British uh, have never done this the Americans don't do it uh, neither do the Russians or the Chinese or any other uh, main play on the world stage so I'm pretty impressed the Israelis do this uh, just gives the people a chance to move out before they come in uh, I should say that uh, most of the Arab countries have no time for Hamas or Hezbollah hence why they've been so quiet over the last seven days or so also interesting that the uh, this recent conflict uh, started on a Sabbath and uh, stage two has also fallen on a Sabbath with a ground invasion now uh, as usual world governments have been quick to condemn what Israel is doing however anybody who is impartial anybody who doesn't have a presupposition can understand that Israel is simply trying to defend her shores uh, from a very small group of terrorists uh, I know in years gone by after the Gulf War uh, George Bush senior called on the Iraqis to raise up uh, a presence and overthrow Saddam uh, they couldn't do it of course because uh, Saddam was too powerful but I believe there were voices in Washington uh, and Tel Aviv and perhaps even in London who are hoping that uh, the Palestinians might overthrow Hamas uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, but as always as I said in my last video you have uh, the usual crowd the left-wingers who are quick as always to pull down uh, democratic Israel a uh, couple of uh, gentlemen George Galloway and Tony Benn uh, I've met both of them and uh, George Galloway and I had a bit of a disagreement uh, some years ago when he came to my church uh, this was before I was saved this was after the first Gulf War and before the second Gulf War probably about the late 90s around about the time of uh, Operation Firefox when British and American jets bombed Iraq uh, for three consecutive nights and uh, Mr. Galloway was trying to argue that uh, Saddam was a good man that uh, the Allied uh, no-fly zones over Iraq were not justified the sanctions were killing the Iraqi people and I put the case forward that if Saddam uh, simply uh, played good boy if you will that uh, the sanctions would have been lifted much like Castro's uh, communist threat uh, through Russian involvement with America uh, but he was insistent that uh, America and Britain and France at the time who were part of the uh, no-fly zone were responsible for what was going on in Iraq I remember reading in the papers around about the same time that uh, food was being flown from Paris into Baghdad to support uh, Hussein and his entourage as always it's always it's always the people who suffer the most the people of China and North Korea who we mentioned in our last video they always suffer the most and the average Palestinian uh, who suffers uh, during this whole conflict with Israel must also say and I'll come back to Galloway in a moment uh, must also say that there are a lot of Christians in the Palestinian areas uh, born again Christians who need our prayers uh, sometimes they get overlooked with the emphasis firmly on Israel and rightly so from a pre-millennial uh, standpoint but there are a lot of 
uh, men and women who are saved and who suffer great poverty in uh, parts of Palestine as it's so popularly called and uh, I've even read accounts of having to beg food uh, from their Muslim neighbours which is a, a disgrace uh, to the body of Christ if that is the case a uh, couple of books I'm going to put on the screen now for you to look up, uh, look up and look out for uh, both about this whole conflict and uh, both of them were of help to me uh, to get a better grasp of what was going on uh, you can't get much truth from the media it's all biased and uh, predominantly stacked against Israel but uh, Mr Galloway was quick uh, to pull down Mr Blair at the time who was uh, the current Prime Minister and I'm all for people uh, calling leaders to repentance uh, what I don't have time for is when you get uh, people in the Church of England for example who are quick to criticize uh, the Brown government with the current credit crunch but uh, these uh, same men uh, are nowhere to be seen when uh, we get on to the real subjects of the Bible like uh, purity and honesty and righteousness uh, they don't have anything to say against the government and that's what they are here for if you are a true Christian uh, Mr. Bishop then we would expect to hear much more from you uh, when it comes to correcting and rebuking our leaders like the Old Testament prophets did uh, instead of cozying up and getting an index linked pension uh, also some people may not know bishops in the Church of England uh, are paid when they go into the House of Lords it is a very lucrative uh, salary and this is one other reason why we don't believe in paid ministry uh, at ex-Catholics for Christ but uh, keep Israel in your prayers uh, this hopefully will be a short incursion hopefully uh, fatalities on both sides will be limited uh, but as always when you're up against evil it takes a long time to defeat it and I think some of the Western governments need to look back in history and really ask themselves uh, what else is Israel supposed to do when uh, 250 million Muslims circle 6 million Jews and we know that for the most part the uh, Arab countries are peaceful towards Israel Israel has a very good relationship uh, with Egypt they share a water line I've been to Egypt it's a, a marvelous country I went to Cairo and looked around the pyramids went downtown uh, the Egyptian government for years have been battling uh, as Islamic extremists and uh, they will have no time whatsoever for Hamas or Hezbollah uh, when I was in Cairo some years ago I wanted to have a look around the local town uh, and uh, we had to have uh, bodyguards travel with us uh, some years prior to my visit uh, I think a dozen or so British tourists were killed by uh, Islamic groups within Egypt wanting to overthrow uh, Mr Mubarak who's been uh, the leader of Egypt for many years of course it is uh, a dictatorship there's no democracy in Egypt even though our tour guide tried to suggest that Christians were treated well in Egypt when I know that they're not um, Christians are treated like second-class citizens and uh, again this is something which the left-wing press don't pick up on but uh, I wanted to have a look around uh, some of the old town of Cairo and uh, our two bodyguards both armed with Kalashnikov rifles uh, had a group of about 50 people they were looking after and I spoke to my bodyguard who was with us and uh, he said uh, I could go but he would have to go with me and I looked at the group of about 45 others sitting on different tables and I thought well if he comes with me only one bodyguard is left to protect the whole lot of them so obviously I couldn't do it unfortunate because I'd like to have a look around on my own but uh, both of the uh, Egyptians were police officers uh, nice guys very polite, uh, very efficient, very respectful and I had a chance to witness to some of the guys uh, in Cairo I told our tour guide about uh, Ramesses drowning in the flood and she just looked at me with a blank expression uh, I had a chance to talk to another Islamic guy in a jewellery shop so I was pretty pleased, I'd, love to, I'd like to go back again sometime it is a very old and ancient city but uh, yeah, Egypt has no time for Islamic extremists uh, no Arab country has any time for them and uh, if they had their way they would overthrow every country in the Middle East and set up Sharia law much like they are trying to do in the United Kingdom in 2009 either way we're looking at uh, unsaved people fighting 
uh, a pretty horrendous guerrilla style war and uh, if you are a Bible believing Christian please pray for uh, Israel please pray for the Palestinians uh, and pray that uh, Jesus will be glorified some way in all of this because when he comes back he will be going to Jerusalem to reign he won't be going to London he won't be going to New York he won't be going to Paris he won't be going to Cairo he will be going to Jerusalem so all eyes on Jerusalem and uh, keep Israel and her leaders and her forces in your prayers thank you okay well news has just broken uh, from Tel Aviv the outgoing Prime Minister Edward Olmert has uh, announced to the world that uh, operations in Gaza will cease as of midnight GMT uh, Mr Olmert is claiming a successful victory over Hamas uh, however the rockets are still coming and the uh, Israeli Defense Force have not been able to stop all of the rockets uh, this time last week Miss Livni said that the goal of the Israeli uh, incursion into Gaza was to stop all rockets and uh, they would continue on in this campaign until all the rockets ceased uh, what is interesting is for the last 24 hours or so Miss uh, Litme has been in Washington DC meeting Condoleezza Rice and uh, having many bilateral meetings with her Mr. Obama of course comes in on Tuesday and he will be the 44th American president it's unclear at the moment whether the Democratic administration soon to take power are going to be as pro and supportive to Israel as the Bush administration have been yet uh, Mr. Bush was the architect of the Middle East Peace Quartet uh, an organization which put a lot of pressure on little old Israel to give up more of her divine land to her Palestinian neighbors and as we said before there are no Palestinians as such uh, the Islamic neighbors around uh, Israel's border are primarily refugees uh, Mr. Arafat uh, was a bisexual Egyptian and uh, Israel although she is far from perfect uh, and even in biblical times she was called the least of all the nations is nonetheless a democratic sovereign nation uh, biblically speaking the Jews are and remain the chosen people of God all of the Old Testament men who wrote the Old Testament the Jewish Tanakh were Jews uh, the Messiah Yeshua Jesus was a Jew and all of the New Testament writers were Jews including Dr. Luke I believe the Jews are very special in the eyes of the Lord and every Bible believing Christian also has a an affection uh, a love for the Jewish people it is tragic when uh, Christian ministries and uh, ministers become anti-Jewish and try to blame the Jews for every problem in the world uh, it is possible that there may be some truth in the fact that uh, certain organizations secret groups may have been founded by Jews that's possible uh, but we cannot and we will not blame every problem every evil in the world on the Jews that of course is a satanic lie and if you were to apply that to any other organization you'd be called a racist Hamas have been very uh, clever using human shields uh, over the last three weeks and as usual the press in the West have uh, failed to report this footage from uh, Israeli F-16s have uh, shown the dilemma of their pilots as to return fire from built up areas or to leave it uh, as we said before when Britain was fighting the IRA she had one hand behind her back and was unable to bomb Dublin uh, when the Americans were fighting the Viet Cong they could have used chemical weapons or even nuclear weapons and if you've ever seen a clip of the film uh, Nixon made by Oliver Stone there was a clip in the film when uh, Anthony Hopkins who plays Richard Nixon uh, screams at uh, one of his advisors I think it was Kissinger and he threatens to drop the big one as he calls it uh, he wasn't able to do that because had he done that it would have brought China and Russia 
perhaps into this conflict and uh, thankfully that was avoided but uh, America had one hand behind her back as did the Soviets in Afghanistan when they were up against the Mujahideen uh, Israel in many ways has fought an old-fashioned war like uh, you read in the Old Testament but uh, even in the 21st century she is still limited by public opinion and in many ways Israel unfortunately has lost uh, the uh, PR war Israel has a very poor image around the world and it seems for the most part that doesn't really concern her but uh, she hasn't won this conflict as far as I can see as far as I'm concerned Israel has not beaten Hamas uh, Israel did not beat the Hezbollah from Lebanon and uh, since 2006 Mr. Olmert has been a wounded and a very weak and poor Prime Minister and that is one of the reasons why he won't be standing in next month's elections uh, how much this conflict was down to Israeli internal politics well that we don't know uh, but what we do know is once again Israel has been uh, chastised by her Lord uh, the God of Israel Yahweh and uh, the Jews will continue to be chastised by the Lord this is very much a paradox which uh, the unsaved secular world know nothing about uh, we can see very clearly from the Bible that uh, Satan for example told David to number Israel and uh, in another part of scripture we find the Lord telling David to number Israel uh, sometimes the devil and God work very closely together to bring about the Lord's ultimate purpose Satan of course wants to destroy Israel whereas the Lord wants to preserve Israel and eventually in the tribulation we will see one third of Israel be saved which sadly means two thirds won't be saved but uh, today this announcement has come across that Israel has won against uh, Hamas and uh, this won't last there will never be any peace in the Middle East because the Jews have continuously rejected their Messiah they rejected their Old Testament prophets and uh, they are currently living under God's judgment and uh, it is down to every Bible believing pre-millennial Christian to pray for Israel to stand uh, with Israel from a uh, divine point of view as far as the land is concerned as we said before there is a lot of uh, corruption in Israeli politics and that is why you and any other Bible believing Christian should not be uh, in any political system the book of Galatians says that uh, the bond woman is to be cast out of the land which of course is a picture of the Muslim and uh, some Christians don't like to be too political when it comes to this issue however Paul says quite clearly that uh, in Isaac would the seed be blessed and only through Isaac and of course ultimately up to Jesus Christ is the land and the covenant upheld so keep watching keep your eyes on Jerusalem uh, this is far from over and uh, anybody who thinks they can split the land up anybody who thinks it's going to be a, a lasting peace is in for a very large disappointment it's also worth noting that uh, Mr. Sharon was involved with the so-called peace process and uh, he was struck down with a very deadly illness still alive but living on a life support machine and Mr. Olmert uh, was also diagnosed with prostate cancer so uh, Israel is a very uh, sacred part of uh, the world but at the same time a very uh, dangerous part of the world when it comes to messing around uh, with uh, God's part of the earth so keep your eyes on Jerusalem keep praying for the men and women of Israel and uh, don't forget the Christians living in uh, the Palestinian areas quote unquote uh, they do suffer, they are many times a forgotten people and it's down to every Bible believing Christian to be supportive of all of these organizations and don't fall for any of this political claptrap of victory and uh, we've achieved our goals because they haven't uh, we know that uh, with the new administration coming in perhaps things are going to change, we'll have to wait and see but uh, either way, keep praying and uh, keep looking up